answer session for people who aren't sure whether Ocean Foundations is right for them. And once I get through these quick questions, I will move on to a couple of topics I think people will be interested in. So the first question is, is Ocean appropriate for puppies? And I got this message from Heather Whitner, Whit Winter. Hello, I was looking at your Ocean's Foundations. Is this good for a newbie with puppy? I want to start her foundation training correctly to set her up for success once she's old enough to move on. And I just wanted to make clear that yes, this is a perfect place to start off with a puppy um, because the way I view training is dog training from the inside out, that if we have a great connection, communication, if we're seeing what our dog is communicating through their body languages, through all those little tiny ripples, that we can avoid having big hairy problems come up in the first place. And starting with a puppy is you know, fantastic in, in, in that regard. Um, through Ocean Foundations, you're going to develop a super keen eye because of the way things are structured. So it starts, you know, very little, not much going on and then adds more and more uh, simple activities, actions as we go. And there's an opportunity for you to get feedback if you're not quite sure what your puppy is communicating via body language. And um, I'm happy to respond and other Ocean members. We have a wide range of experience levels and different breeds and stuff in here. It's a great group. And, you know, a member, Meredith Reeve, is starting off with this puppy and she wrote, I have a puppy currently 18 weeks old and I've been using Mark training with him virtually from the time he arrived at 10 weeks of age. Mark training is a great way to put into action these ocean principles of observe your dog and connect with compassion, engagement with joy. It's just a great tool for implementing that. So anyway, and I st definitely start puppies off. That's the first thing they learn. Um, perhaps after when I offer a piece of food, you take it, which most dogs will take, but not Dakota, but he does, he did early on and he continued to. So anyway, she goes on to say, the bucket is definitely Jordy's default happy place to go. And I've been using Mark buckets to build foundation agility skills, concepts like hind end awareness, staying, driviness, forward focus, etc. His first attempts at running through a tunnel were aided by a bucket placed at the opposite end. Wrapping a cone or wing starts and ends with a bucket. I even began teeter training at lowest heights using a bucket at the end of the teeter as a first step. This will be my sixth dog that I've trained for agility and the first time using Mark training as a tool. It's made a big difference and I'm training terriers, not the easiest breeds to run agility with. Yeah, and um, Meredith has shared a couple of these videos. Oh, I'm not sure she's sharing them here. Um, I may ask her to. I think she's been sharing them in the Ocean community group. But it, 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 this puppy is a perfect example of, of what Mark training looks like um, and how it makes everything easier to train because of the mindset of the dog. And I don't want to get too far down that rabbit hole. So let's see. Here's another question. This question is from Jean. She writes, I'm trying to decide which level to sign up for. I have an 18 month old border collie with whom I've started agility, nose work and herding. This is my fifth dog, third border collie. My approach with him has been different. I'm focusing on better communication, creating a relaxed mind and cooperative care. Hence your program interests me. I'm at a point in my life where competition goals are not my main priority. I do a lot of reading, webinars, etc., and work with good local people. I was introduced to some Mark Bucket work in the power of pause. Yeah, the power of pausing is something that didn't come to mind as a concept for me until I started teaching Mark training through Ocean. And um, it, it has a profound effect um, on a dog's mental state, just these little pauses, just like when dogs play, they take these little pauses, that it, it, it helps we humans take pauses in training instead of this continuous bing, bing, bang, bang, boom, boom, that can rev up some dogs and overwhelm other dogs. So that's fantastic that you um, understand the power of pause. So she goes to write, I find my intellectual understanding growing by leaps and bounds, but I need feedback on implementing and seeing more. This is exactly what Ocean is designed to do. That I am pretty much telling you everything in this free Ocean for Dogs group. 
but it's kind of coming, you know, just random things that I'm sharing here. And probably a lot of people go, yeah, yeah, I'm about that. I'm about that. I believe in that. Yeah. And, and I know that it's so what I'm sharing isn't really new information, but what makes ocean unique is that it gives you a step-by-step, -step, a very simple process to help you implement these principles so that you are able to observe your dog while you're training. You're able to connect with the dog in front of you because you are seeing your dog while you're training. And while it sounds simple to do, it actually isn't simple to do because our brains you know, have the limited capacity to focus on one thing at a time. And so ocean helps your brain prioritize in such a way that you are able to uh, take in the communication that's coming from your dog while you're doing other things. I'll see what I can do about posting this group. Fantastic. Yes, please post videos of your brilliant little puppy, Jordy. That, and what I want people to focus on on those videos is look at the mindset of that dog that's being expressed through body language. That he is confident, he's enthusiastic, he's he's focused but he is like knows his job and boom he's running to that mark bucket it's really phenomenal he's just a perfect example of how how if you do if you prioritize a dog's mental state and you do the mark training first how everything else becomes super easy to train which is why you don't have to get all involved in the obstacle training because it happens so fast so there's plenty of time for that later on um, okay, let's see. So Jean goes on to say, I don't have any problems I'm trying to solve at this point since my dog is young and I've not put him in situations that are over his head. Phenomenal. And the reason she's not doing this is this is her fifth dog. <laughs> that by then most people have realized that you got to catch these um, mental emotional issues at, when they're tiny ripples or you end up with big hairy problems. Um, and because she's focusing on better communication, creating a relaxed mind and cooperative care, um, which is a fantastic thing to do with border collies because they can be so, you know, flinchy and flinchy and you know tense about um, being handled, including my dog Dakota. So let's see. Um, she goes on to say, "I'm trying to be mindful of what he tells me through behavior and use that to direct training." Fantastic. That's an ocean principle right there is that we may have a training plan and it's a good way to start um, every session with a plan, but your dog also brings not a plan per se, but themselves. And I think it's really easy to get locked into, I have a plan, I have a goal, especially if we've rented an agility field and we have money involved and time restraints. Um, but it really, you end up making more progress if it's a collaboration between the dog and the person. So whichever dog shows up is the dog you train. And that's a pretty common principle. Um, but to implement it takes a shifting of your mindset. And like I've said, that, that Ocean, it through this step-by-step -step process of going through, observe your dog, connect with compassion, engagement with joy, attitude for anything, never stop learning. By implementing those things, it just helps you realize really quickly when you veered off and now you're going back to the plan or external behavior or I want to progress, I have this goal, blah, 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 that ends up really putting you back instead of forward. So, and yeah, that's no more said about that. So let's see, she's saying um, he's a more thoughtful guy than my last boy that was driven in more frenetic manner. In many ways, he's been an easy dog thanks to the insights my other dogs have provided. Yeah, fantastic. Yes, it, it, you are not the first one to go, I don't want this again. I mean, my first agility dog, it was kind of an ADD high, like high arousal, crazy guy. He was just really a sweetheart dog, but um, it made me anxious because I never knew what he was gonna do. And so what did I focus on with the next dog, Lil? It's like the first thing, I made sure we had is connection, engagement, um, connection, engagement. That was it. And she's been brilliant at that and everything else. And yeah, along the way. So uh, Jean can, finishes by saying also the different levels appear to, to be the same except for the length of time. Yeah, that and that's intentional that that everybody who's an ongoing member in Ocean, I want us all to be on the same page. So you go through Ocean Foundations 
And each time it's offered, I encourage people to go through it again because I myself go through it again with each new group. And every time I go through it, I'm reminded of things that have fallen away from the foreground of my mind or wherever that stuff is, is not necessarily in the front. Um, but, um, and I always gain new insights. So my goal isn't to get people to sign up for Ocean. My goal is to get people to benefit from Ocean. So yeah, signing up is the first necessary step, but um, you know, I send out weekly emails and um, you know, with, you know, here's what's coming next and here's what you should be working on. And our Facebook group is very active. It's a separate group just for the community. And, you know, I'm, I'm posting, I'm constantly posting, you know, and hoping people will uh, comment and, and, you know, share videos and ask questions. And um, it's been pretty active lately, which really makes me feel good. I mean, it's a lot of work to stay up on it for me. But the point is, the more you engage, the easier it is to implement these new principles or implement old principles that you've never been able to implement and to create habits, that habits take time to build. And by the time you've been through the foundation, if you've really dug in and you know, worked a few minutes most days with your dog and you know, maybe you know, kept some reminder notes around so that you remember to do it when you're training, that by the end of foundations, you will have already noticed a shift in your you know, habits and what you're prioritizing. So I think that is enough on that. And Kirsty is writing, uh, have you ever had anyone say to you they do not like using mark training in agility training because it could change the trajectory of the dog? Um, to this, I assume she's referring to jumping. So if that's happening for real, then the mark bucket is not being positioned properly. It's probably positioned too close to the jump and it's causing the dog to pull back and jump in semi-collection. Um, dogs need to start thinking about collecting three strides before they actually need to collect. And if, if you've never noticed how your dog communicates, it's starting to think about collection. That's something interesting to observe on videos. Um, I could tell you the answer to that, but I encourage you all to watch your dog, watch your dog's body language and see what you see whether it's um, as your dog is going over the dog walk, three strides to four, hits that uh, contact zone for running, or uh, if your dog collects in that case, some dogs have been trained to extend, but most kind of do a collection stride there. Um, or if your dog has a stop contact, or if your dog has big spacing and um, your dog is gonna take a jump, just have a look and see if you can figure out how your dog communicates their thinking collection, because they actually, they, they communicate when they begin to think about it. So, you know, the other thing that comes up with this question is I have come across a fair number of people who are unfamiliar with the real benefits of mark training, and it isn't on the external behavior. Yes, there are so many great external behaviors you can train on a mark bucket. I mean, pivoting is something that Sylvia Turkman, you know, turned me on to 15 years ago. But also the physical, um, uh, what's the word? The physical posture a dog needs to get into to be able to stop on a mark without tipping it over is very similar to the way a quarter horse collects. So they drop their rear and they weight shift back. So that's collection before it jumps. That's just basic collection. And um, so there's a, a, you know, it's great for training distance and all that. And if you haven't seen my promo for mark training, in two minutes, you will get a sense of all the benefits for it. But that's really not what it's intended to be used for. The main benefit is on the dog's mental and emotional state. And this has been a really hard thing for me to communicate because everybody who's not been through Ocean, not everybody, but most people are thinking in terms of that's an, a prop and I'm going to use it like a prop. And one issue I had by offering Mark Training Essentials as a standalone course, and I really had to think long and hard about whether to do that because of this potential problem, is no matter how much I talked about the main benefits are on your dog's mental and emotional state, a lot of people just kind of viewed it like, this is a prop, I want to train my dog to collect, I want to train my dog to do distance, I want to train my dog, blah, 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 blah. And, um, 
And what they found in the course, well, while I was showing them, um, you know, here's the beginning steps of mark train. You need to develop and balance a dog's driving to a mark bucket, staying on it and releasing from it. And until that dog has a very high level of enthusiasm, which is balanced with impulse control, which my, uh, the term epic comes from, uh, enthusiasm plus impulse control, till you're at the level, um, you don't have to be all the way at the level of the dog in the promo, but your dog has to be like seeing a mark and, and wanting to run to it and understanding to stay on it before you can start using it as a prop anyway. Because, you know, it's not going to work like what you see in the video until you've built up that, that mental state. So it's become a catch-22 with a few people, you know, saying, um, feeling that I held back something in Mark Train that I, you know, the secret ingredient I didn't share. Um, but I am sharing it and I just shared it again. It is really on prioritizing the dog's mental and emotional state. And if you've never done that and it, you don't know how you would do it, that is a reason to sign up for Ocean because Ocean teaches you how to do that step by step using Mark Training as one of a few different tools um, that really simplifies things so that you can focus on your dog's mental and emotional state such that you can shape the kind of mental state that is incredibly enjoyable for your dog. It's like calm readiness, eagerness. Um, but that also works really well for whatever activities you're doing with your dog, whether it's, you know, search and rescue or um, freestyle or even obedience, trick training, agility, or just off-leash hikes is, is, you know, maintaining this inner state where your dog is connected and it it's not dependent on you know the dog being next to you to be connected that the dog that you've developed this relationship of connection and trust um, that will come from implementing these ocean principles so i think i've answered that um so here's an email question i got from somebody else who um well the i don't think christy took the um, mark training course but here's somebody who did she said, I can see how Mark training would be beneficial, but I did find the clean run course to be more of an infomercial on Mark training. The course needs more instruction where to use the Mark bucket and agility, how far before a jump should the Mark bucket be in order for the dog to take off properly, how far before after an obstacle should the Mark bucket be, etc. The overall information given the clean run course was not enough for a trainer to begin to use Mark training efficiently to reap all the benefits. I hope you'll offer more training details at a later date. Thank you. And I really do appreciate this person sharing this feedback because it's, it really is a good example of I was unable to communicate in a way that this person could understand that all of the information was in there. And if I were to tell people how where to put a mark buck in the jilly, how far before of a jump, how far after, blah, blah, blah. Along with the getting started with mark training, I would say, I'm making up 50%. I'll say 50% of people are going to go try to go right to that from the beginning. They're going to get their dog in a mark bucket and within a few days or a week, they're going to start doing that. And it's not going to work because their dog doesn't have enough value built in. The dog doesn't have the ability to stop on a mark bucket running from 30 feet away. It's a physical skill they need to develop. Um, or the dog doesn't know how to stay on a mark bucket when the handler is running by it or the handler isn't coming with the dog. And so they'll just go, oh, well, mark training, this doesn't work. Mark training is not effective. So I'm intentionally, you know, not including advanced, advanced mark training, although I did include medium advanced mark training in that course. But really, the way you get to more advanced mark training is by taking ocean. And that is the, there's no information I can give you that I didn't give you. Um, but I did offer to this person that, hey, if you already have a highly mark trained dog, post your questions and videos in the free Ocean for Dogs Facebook group where this live event's taking place, post them and I will give you feedback and I will tell you, you know, where I would put that um, mark bucket in, in an agility course or where I'd put it in front of a jump for your particular dog. Um, 
before or after obstacles, et cetera, all of that, um, I would definitely be willing to give her that feedback. And I did encourage her to do so. But you know, one rule of thumb is I don't put a mark bucket closer than three strides after a jump if I'm um, if the dog is going to be taking that jump and extension for that same reason that dogs need three strides to, to think about collecting. If I want my dog to be in extension, I need to give them the um, visual that means I can take this jump and extension and I don't need to start thinking uh, collection to hit that mark bucket and stick that landing until after I've landed after the jump. So that I can answer that one question. But again, your dog isn't going to drive um, hard over a jump in extension towards a mark bucket until you've built the value. And I guess I can say one more thing, that where to put the mark bucket in agility, anywhere you would put a toy, you can put a mark bucket. And the main difference is with a toy, the dog is locking on to a reward. The dog is thinking about diving for the toy. And in, in the case of the mark bucket, the dog is thinking about running to a behavior that necessitates some thinking. So a dog running to a mark bucket is going three strides before, oh, I need to start thinking about collecting, versus a dog that's going for a toy is going, I need to grab that toy. So again, different mental state and different body position. So one dog is preparing, preparing to rock back, one dog is preparing to dive down, to rock forward into their front end. And if you compare this, and I have shared this, I believe in this Ocean for Dogs, but lots of videos in the, my um, canine jumping forum group, that you will see the dog goes over the last jump differently when they're preparing to dive for a toy. And the thing I love about driving towards a mark bucket is if it's far, three strides away from that last jump, and you will see your dog take every jump, including the last jump, the same exact way because they were driving towards um, an obstacle in this case versus driving towards a reward. And there are difference of opinions. People, some people really have it set in their heads that when their dog is diving for a toy, that that looks like good jumping to them, um, this super low head. And I'm not gonna get into that topic here. I personally don't agree with that. I'm looking for a natural jumping style when the dog lands, just like a horse, that the way they pull some of that um, uh, force off their front ends is they will raise their head upon landing. Um, so I'd, I'm not looking for a diving kind of head. I'm looking for you know a head that it comes up so that it takes some of that force off the front end. But that's a whole other topic. So let's see. Um, and you know one other thing that you know ocean is not for everyone. That and I completely respect that it's like you know I don't want to you know get into you know all this the details of where my dog is at. Like my dog doesn't have any problems and. Um, I'm fine with everything and, you know, got a perfect recall off leash and there's no quirky behaviors that make me crazy and he's not barking and spinning and all this stuff and everything's great, then it may not be for you. But the funny thing is, is when I was um, first exposed to these kind of principles and to mark training, I, I didn't have a big hairy problem. I was just curious to see what would happen when I tried some simple actions. And so if you're that kind of curious person, then Ocean is for you, whether you, your dog has a big hairy behavior problem or that everything's going well. But if your thing is like, you know what, things are good enough, you know, I, you know, I just wanna know, you know, how, you know, I can use mark buckets um, in training, I would say take the mark training course and um, proceed and post in the free group. I think you'll be really happy with that. Um, and I don't think you'd be happy going deep, deep, deeper, deeper, deepest with your dog in ocean. So I just wanted to also share that I answered a question about improving a dog's recall ocean style. And I thought that answer was gonna show up in these comments, but it showed up in the um, comments under the live, the scheduled live event saying, you know, this is going to come and maybe these will merge again. But definitely listen to that because it's really about when you observe your dog 
And Ocean starts with observing your dog at home in their environment to really understand all the subtle nuances and to start connecting the dots between some of your dog's performance quirks and some of your dog's uh, personality quirks that are showing up in teeny ways at home. But check out Pax's story. It's a video I, 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 where I talk about something this dog does at home that um, inspired a particular uh, way of uh, inspiring this dog to come when called and to let himself be caught um, when he doesn't want to leave the dog park. Um, uh, the, his people like to go to dog parks. So it's, it's a great example of the implementation of an ocean principle. And this is just for this one dog. With another dog, it would, might be an entirely different method I would test. But I guess it brings up one point. I'm a firm believer that if what you're doing isn't working, that you're probably not working on the core issue. You're working on the expression of the core issue. And in Pax's case, that we touched on the core issue, and that's why we got really fast results, and the results stuck. As long as the people keep consistently doing what they're supposed to be doing, which I don't know if they are, um, but I hope they are, because it's not that hard to do, that uh, Pax will consistently do what he's doing because it's coming from a genetic predisposition, part of one of the breeds that he, he's a mixed breed, but part of uh, his breeding um, actually cares where his people are. So anyway, check out that video. And I'm also, I shared another video that um, is an example of some of the stuff that I share every week in, in Ocean. So there's an email that goes out to members. It's like, what's happening in Ocean this week? And it, it may be a shared one-on-one -on -one coaching session via Zoom. It may be an interview that I had with somebody, like I've done a couple of recent interviews, with Tim Lewis, um, the Biology of Dogs author. It's a super fun guy and it's a fantastic topic. I'm gonna do another talk with him because we never got to the endocrine system. And I'm dying to, um, to talk to him about that and the parasympathetic and sympathetic and all that stuff that seems to be all, all the rage right now. But the endocrine system isn't talked about as much and I want him to share his thoughts because he has a way of talking about biology in a way that um, we lay people can understand and get excited about. Uh, Tim and I talk about this, that, that you know, dogs, the domesticated dog, um, you know, they self-selected, like the dogs that were able to read the human beings and know which ones were going to give them food and which ones were going to kick them around the campfire, you know, kick them away from the campfire. Those became the domesticated dogs. So our dogs are constantly reading us. So they are aware whether or not we are connected to them or whether we're spacing out. So the more often we're connected, the more they in turn are connected. Like if I, I've joked about this a lot, in ocean that if dogs were to describe us, they would go, oh, she's very distracted, especially at trials. She can't stop watching all the teams running in the ring and she doesn't really pay attention to me. And then she gets all rushy going into the ring and she can kind of pull the leash off because she's in a big rushy rushing. And, you know, so that's the way they describe us. But, um, you know, through again, these simple um, actions that you just start developing a, a, like a, a more relaxed stance. Like I know that's been true for me is instead of feeling tense, that when I'm hiking off leash or when I'm with my dogs getting ready to enter the ring at a trial, I just feel relaxed and I feel like, you know, there's no rush and I can take the leash off in a very present way instead of, you know, feeling like I got, I got to get the leash off and I can feel, I can take my time, you know, um, you know, after the run too, putting the leash on that, that, and I feel more relaxed when I'm hiking with my dogs off leash. Yeah. I'm watching my dogs. I'm watching the environment. But I don't have this this you know this tension that used to exist um, in me. So that's like the results of meditation. I do have a meditation practice. I've had one most days for three years and on and off the rest of my life. But it's it, highly recommend it. And so we're going to be doing a Zoom uh, meeting on the topic of meditation via ocean principles, so that uh, people who don't want to take on a you know formal meditation practice can think about the implementation of these ocean principles as a form of meditation with their dogs. And um, I think your dog will, it will surprise you to see how your dog responds to that. Cause I know my dogs totally, totally respond to my vibe um, because they're so used to me responding to theirs, I guess. So 
And I think, you know, that covers, um, that covers it. The other questions were from the Mark training um, class. And so I'm going to just um, leave it open for a few minutes and see if anybody has questions. So, oh, hi, Karen. Karen Cornwell made it, um, UK, so it's late there. I'll yawn for you. <sighs> Uh, Heather, we sure did have fun. Oh my gosh, we had fun. <laughs> Each of us had one crazy terrier and one um, easier terrier. <laughs> and everybody had two of each. So Ann had two border terriers. Heather had two um, oh, Jack Russells. And I had two Australian terriers. And they were such funny dogs. I mean, they were like fast and crazy. And it was just a riot. And Heather's saying, love what you're doing here, Deb. I'm very impressed. Well, thank you. It's been, gosh, it's been like 10 years or longer since, um, probably a little bit longer than that since we were all doing that in upstate New York. So kind of funny how life takes us in different directions. And uh, for me, it's been interesting to see how everything I've done in my past seems to have come together uh, to form ocean that, you know, my being a visual artist, um, that my work dealt with the biology of vision and uh, brings really the, you know, the process of seeing to the forefront of, and where people actually understand how you're actually, you're, my art gives people an opportunity to go, oh, raw data enters and my brain is creating the image. So it's, uh, it's kind of cool that I'm doing the very same thing with dog training now. Uh, I guess we just keep circling around to our passions in life. Um, okay, let's see if I'm going to check, uh, I'm looking at some other comments. Well, you know, if nobody has any questions, I'll just end with, um, Ocean Foundations. I only open it, like, it seems like, when did I open it last? So September, October, November, December, January, February, it was six months. And I'm guessing it will be close to six months before it opens again. And the last time I opened it, there were some people who were begging, you know, a day or two later. And I just, you know, had to say no, because, um, you know, there has to be a cutoff at some point and people need to get moving and, you know, in, uh, within the same time frame. And the longer people are in, the, the more, the deeper they go, because the deeper you go, the deeper you realize there is to go. And the more you see, the more you get that you're not seeing other stuff. And I think one of the hardest things about communicating ocean is when you're saying there's more to see, it's like, well, like what? And I'm like, well, you got to see to see. But I think I've talked a little bit about that, you know, if you can catch these ripples, the tiniest little ripples in your dog's body language that can communicate slight confusion uh, in training, you can modify what you're doing and build resilience versus the, letting that confusion go to a state that creates stress. And then the dog has a stress response, whether it's leaving work, whether it's sniffing, whether it's barking, you know, running off, however the dog expresses that, that confusion really is an aversive. And if, if more people thought of it as that versus my dog's just confused, um, especially people who, you know, try to be, completely positive or close to it, as close as you can get to it. Um, I think you'd be very interested in, in noting the teeniest, tiniest ripples of confusion beginning to build in your dog so that you could um, um, relieve them of that negative experience. And the end result is you end up with a dog that goes, you know, oh, I'm a little confused. I'm going to show it to you in a very gentle way because I know that when I show that to you, you then give me the information I need. And so what you're building as a byproduct is resilience, that resilience and trust. So a dog that knows that you're saying, I see you're confused. And then the person changes what they're doing a little bit, does kind of a lateral move, you know, does something different, maybe makes it a little bit easier, goes to something the dog knows, takes a little break, whatever it is. The dog learns to trust you, learns that training's fun and the dog also you know, realizes that, you know, mistakes are no big deal and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, gosh, I think I've pretty much covered 
everything here. And I just encourage you all, you know, if you're thinking about um, joining Ocean, and if you have any questions, go ahead and post them under this video, and I will check back with comments or just post them as a new post. I'm happy to answer questions. And um, if Ocean isn't for you, I hope you'll stay in touch through the um, free Ocean group because I will uh, continue to post stuff, not as regularly once you know um, the registration closes because there are only so many hours in the day and enough of my hours are being spent in front of the computer already. So I'm happy to do it, but um, I have to scale back you know, to really be there for the members in the group. So anyway, have a great day.